Good morning. Welcome to TCR Child Care Corporation. I'm Kay Jennings and this is Teresa Jackson. And we want to say thank you to everybody that participated in the Child Care Workforce Stabilization Grant that was put out by the Alabama Department of Human Resources. Uh, we've had a unique opportunity to talk to a lot of providers throughout the state of Alabama. And as appreciative as you are uh, to us for, for having this or, or helping with this, uh, we're just as appreciative to you. You're, you're the guys doing the hard work. And this is a very informal um, training or information session that we wanted just to talk about things that we got to see during our first round to answer those questions and to provide information so the next round will be easier for everybody. So, Ms. Teresa, I'm going to look over here to you and say, what some of the questions that you got or some of the things that you may want to talk about? Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, as Kay said, it's been a pleasure to work on this project. Um, we've got to talk to a lot of providers, and we appreciate everything that you and your staff do. Um, one of the main things is to consider each quarter is the date of hire for each of your staff members. Uh, each quarter has a beginning date of that grant period. Um, this past one was October 1st through December 31st. So staff had to be employed uh, 30 days before the grant period started, so that was September 1st. Now, as each quarter comes uh, throughout the next 18 months, you will notice on the payout schedule, um, there is a date that your staff have to be employed by for each quarter to be eligible for the bonus. So the next quarter starts, of course, January 1st, so your staff have to be employed as of December 1st. Um, it, this schedule is posted on our website. Uh, we will also be doing a mail out within the next few weeks uh, to all the providers that will have that information in there, but please refer to that schedule. Uh, so that's the main thing because you don't want to put any of your staff on the employee roster that is not, doesn't meet the eligibility requirements of the data hire. Um, another question that was really popular was, um, or asked a lot, was what if somebody's out on medical leave? Um, as long as they met the requirements before they went out on medical leave, maybe they had a baby or had some minor surgery or something, they would be eligible if they're out on medical leave and they are planning on returning. Um, so they would be eligible for the bonus. We've had a lot of questions about medical leave and uh, we want to stress what Teresa just said. You have to make sure that they were eligible prior to going on that leave. So if someone was hired in um, August and they only worked part-time hours and then this program started in October and they were out on medical leave that you had granted them, then you have to have a look back period to see their total hours work. So if they've only worked a month, uh, what we've told people is that you need to be able to, to average at least 12 weeks. So um, there's a lot of employees. We are getting a lot of calls from employees, actual employees that were like, well, I was on a medical leave and I should have qualified for this. But if you're an employee listening to this, you have to remember that the your employer has some has to have something valid to base how they're going to pay you, whether you're full time or part time, and that's going to be a total average hours of some time that you've actually worked, and and looking back in this grant period cycle. Yes. Um, another common question was from home providers um, is whether they can count themselves as an employee and get the bonus. Um, well, of course, a lot of the home providers, you're the only staff member. So yes, you, as long as you meet the requirement of being a DHR licensed center, um, and of course you're going to work at least the full-time hours of 25 hours a week, I know, uh, probably triple that. Uh, but you would be able to list yourself, uh, list your name on there and as owner, teacher, um, so forth on the roster. Uh, be sure and put the date of hire. Uh, if you don't know the exact month and date because you've been in business 20 or 30 years, that's fine too. Put the month and the year. Um, but that's really important. Um, so another, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Another thing important about the hire dates and the, is we've had a lot of programs that have listed employees that were not eligible. Um, and, and I think we saw this with a lot of our, um, our home providers because 
they may list a sub or someone who comes in and helps them, but, but when we called to talk to them, it was like, well, they only come in once a month. Remember that the eligibility for a part-time person is a weekly, not this isn't during the entire grant period, but this is per week. That they have to work a minimum 16 hours to 25 hours per week to be classified as part-time, and then 25 plus hours to be classified as full-time. So if they're not eligible, don't list them. We had a lot of people list employees that were not eligible because they said, well, it said to list subs. Only list eligible subs, eligible part-time people, eligible full-time people. If they're not eligible, whether it's based on their hours, hire date, what have you, don't include them in your current grant application as we move forward. Right. And some may qualify the, for the first quarter and may not qualify for the second quarter and so on through the uh, total eight quarters. It, you know, Teresa, I've gotten questions on since we've had a lot of people at, submit their application and say, well, this incentive has made some of my part-time workers want to work full-time. Mm -hmm. How do I change that moving forward? Well, that's going to be, we're going to post another video where we go over this, the, is, what's it called? The sub subsequent, subsequent. Subsequent application. Application that's going to, that we're going to get more in depth about that. But that's where you'll do that, is you'll list them moving forward, and you do. Now remember, and I'll, this is for everybody that's involved, whether you're an employer, a provider, or you're an employee, a center worker, is that this is all voluntary. Um, no one is required to do this. Therefore, just because you've submitted your first application, don't think, well, I don't have to submit another one because I'm automatically going to be eligible the next time. You will be eligible, but you have to submit the sub the sub grant or the subsequent grant that each quarter following because we don't know if you want to continue to participate or not. And that is strictly voluntary. Um, if you are listening and you're a center employee, there are a lot of centers that have opted out um, for whatever reason and chose not to participate. Uh, your center may be that center just because you have a friend that works for a center that's just down the road um, and they got the grant or they got the bonus. It doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to get the bonus that, because that's going to be at the center level. Okay. So that list, that um, employee roster will change, maybe, hopefully it will grow, that you'll keep staff and add to. So each quarter, um, just again, I'll refer back to that payout schedule. Uh, you have to adhere to those uh, application periods that the department has posted on that schedule. And if you miss the deadline, uh, you won't be eligible for that quarter. So just be sure and post that somewhere and highlight it. I like highlighting. Um, you know, each period and then, you know, that way you know you won't miss the deadline. Um, Kay's talked about for the part-time and full-time staff uh, to be able to qualify. Um, one big question is, is this taxable? Yes. <gasps> Teresa said the T word. Sorry, the IRS has got to get their part. This is taxable money. This is a bonus. Um, if you have a payroll program, this is, and you, or you use it, uh, your circular E from the IRS, uh, that lovely book um, that will put you to sleep, um, this is a 22% tax bracket for a bonus. Um, so every provider does things differently. TCR cannot tell you how to pay your staff. You know how you pay your staff, uh, but this is taxable, okay? Um, so the employee has to pay their part and then the employer has to pay their part. So please remember that. Just tell your staff it is taxable. And this, this goes out to all those. We've had lots of calls that said, you know, hey, I was supposed to get a $1,500 check and my check was for $1,300 or, or whatever the amount was. This, this is a taxable. If you're an employee, um, it's going to be taxed and we, that's, it, it's just a fact of life and, you know, be proud that you're getting the, the, the money, the incentive that you are getting because otherwise you wouldn't be getting that. So just, you know, be thankful for that. Let's be positive. Yes. Um, providers have asked to, had a couple of questions. Uh, can they stipulate how these bonuses are paid out? 
Simple answer, no. The department in the guidance has said you have to pay your staff. If they're listed on that roster and they're still employed when you receive the funds and you get ready to pay it out, you have to pay that staff. And you have 30 days within receipt to pay your staff, okay? Um, you cannot stipulate that because they stay out all the time or they have done something you don't agree with in your center, you, you cannot stipulate. The, the department is the only one that stipulated. They have to uh, meet the data hire requirements, the work hours uh, requirement, and your center has to meet the requirements. So if, if that employee meets those requirements, they are due that bonus. So you have to pay that. <laughs> and Teresa brings up, that makes me go back and think um, regarding, we, we've had several phone calls that said, well, I work for ABC Child Care, and I'm using that as a generic name. I'm sure there's a, a center called ABC Child Care, so please forgive me if that's your center, but this is a very generic way of talking about it. Um, and I worked there all year long, and I quit back on September the 15th. I got tired of how they were acting, blah, 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 whatever your reason is, or that employee's reason is, if you're not working there when this is paid out, then you're not eligible for it. If you have an employee who, how we understand it, if you submit your application, and you complete the paperwork, and you do that, and you did that on December the 15th, and that employee comes in and resigns December the 20th, and you didn't get the check, and you've not gotten the check to process it yet, if they're not working when you process that check, then they're, that they're not eligible. So what do you do? Well, you don't pay that employee and you submit that what you have left, that difference comes back to TCR Child Care Corporation and, and that is a check that you would send back to us with a brief explanation as to why you're sending it back. Um, we also had people uh, understand the process better as we move forward and those subs that people listed. Um, you're now calling and saying, well, they don't work the minimum hours. What do I do? And, and, and we have a lot of checks that are coming back to us because you included someone and we, we did not know that they didn't work the hours until we started calling and questioning people or talking to people more so on the phone. Right. Okay. Kay brings up another point. Um, when after you have paid out your staff, you have to provide proof to TCR that you did pay that staff uh, and meet the guidelines of the guidance. So after what paperwork is acceptable, uh, that depends. Every provider is different. Uh, you may have you may have a large center that you have a payroll program. Um, you can send a payroll report. Just be sure your name, your center name, and your ad center address is on there. As Kay talked about, there may be an ABC daycare out there. There are several daycares with similar names, so please put your provider name on there, your daycare center name, um, and your address on there so we'll know to get that in the correct file. Um, it could be, a, if you're a home provider, maybe you only got two staff, a signed certification by each of your staff members. Uh, with their signature and date and the amount that they received, uh, copies of check stubs where it's got, and, and I've uh, kind of suggested that you label this the CCWS bonus, because that's what it is, and that way you've got it for all your record keeping. Um, just mark that on there, just some type of documentation, and that will be required each quarter. Um, we will not be sending notices out, you know, every quarter reminding you, so please send that in to us. Um, you have like two weeks, I believe, after you have uh, submitted your payment to your staff to uh, turn that back verification back into this. So please do that for us. Um, and as Kay said, if anybody quits, you know, um, just be sure and notify us of that so we can um, note that on your roster. And Teresa brought up another point as far as stipulating who can and who can't get this. Um, we've already had employees call and saying that we've got centers that are charging their employees to participate and we just want you to know that if, if that is the case, um, as we're getting those phone calls, we are making notes to say, is this the case? Do we have centers? 
that have just um, that are charging employees to participate, and we are waiting on guidance back. Uh, from the department in regards to if we find a center that is not complying uh, with the rules as it's written in their application, you know, what do we do? How do we handle that? And um, I know that's not going to be a problem moving forward because we've had too many centers that are just too excited um, about what's going on and, and this, this opportunity that they're getting to provide this to their workforce. So. We, we don't see, we don't think that's going to happen, but we are getting those kind of calls. And this video, we want to make it user friendly so that if you're a provider, you can watch it. If you're a, if you're the worker, you can watch it so that you, you're informed. We know a well-informed staff is the best thing out there. Um, to go back to, we, I've had people say, well, what about that? You know, I've got some employees, they don't come to work, their attendance is not. I said, well, use this as a way to hopefully move forward and attract some people who are wanting to come to work, who are, are willing to show up every day and put some policy and procedure in place. This is a great time for you to really look at, you know, what, what do you expect with attendance? What do you expect with dress code? What do you expect with professionalism? Put some really simple guidelines in writing and adhere to those. And we can't help you out with that, but that's the advice we can give you is, as a program, look at what you have in place and, and really study that and see, because we get it. You know, sometimes maybe it doesn't seem that it's that fair, but that is how it's written and that's how we've got to look at it. That's all the questions I can think of. We've got a lovely beach scene behind us now. Throughout the throughout our video, we've had our website pulled up and we wanted to have it up there so you would be familiar with it. Um, anything moving forward, the updated, the, the, the Department of Human Resources has updated the application and the guidelines. There's been some updating, updates to who can participate, who can't participate. The, the timeline has is, is been updated. Little things for clarification um, has been updated to hopefully make it easier because as we've gone through this process, we've learned a lot. Um, again, I, I would I urge everybody to go to our website, um, look at the new the new grant guidance, um, the new application, read it. Uh, we've, all, we've had, surprisingly, I've had, I don't know if Therese has had any of these calls, but I've gotten a lot of calls from people that say, okay, well, I applied for this, so what do I do with it? Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> read, read the application, read the guidelines, read the directions. Um, when you submit those names, know that you're, you know, that you're submitting accurate information um, because it's just as much of your responsibility to have that clear, concise paperwork as it is for us to keep up with it and process it on this end. So we encourage you to do that. Yes. Our website is a great tool um, if you don't want to uh, use a paper application. And I, I would say if you use a paper application for these uh, next seven quarters, uh, please write clearly. We've had a, a struggle with some of the email addresses. I know there's not a lot of room on there. Um, you know, please uh, write clearly on there, but our website is really easy to go on there, especially the next quarters, because all you have to do is that the one page application and the employee roster. You don't have to send the W-9 if you've already done the initial application. Um, so it's a great resource. You can just click there. It comes straight to us, uh, to the email address. So just do that. That saves a lot of time and you know it, you know, we'll get here. Um, so if you do print it out though and email it or fax it or mail it, please write clearly so we'll um, make sure we get it to the right place. Um, and, and Teresa brings up another, I think, great question. Is, so I thought we had a lot of providers that participate in subsidized childcare and you get that payment, you get your subsidy payment mm -hmm. through the Alabama, I think it's STARS, STARS accounting mm -hmm. software through the state of Alabama. So a lot of programs just made the assumption that I want direct deposit because it's going to come right through the, they have my information. 
This is not the department. The department has contracted this out with TCR and the Alabama Partnership for Children. So first, make sure that you are getting the correct information from the region you live in. So if you're in our region, then you're going to really need to make sure you're sending us the, the, your direct deposit and your, your um, W-9. We don't have that. So we had to do a lot of trying to find people uh, to get that information. Also, uh, be monitoring your email. Where, how many applications do we process, Teresa? Probably right at a thousand now. <laughs> so it's impossible for us to make phone calls to a thousand different people, get you on the phone on any given day and, and be able to tell you. Make sure you put a phone number that works. If you don't have voicemail, you may want to add voicemail because I, I realize a lot of the phones, that numbers that we're getting are cell phones and people have turned on their spam so that it sends an unknown caller directly to your voicemail. And we're getting that. We're leaving voice messages. People aren't checking their voice messages. They're not checking their emails. So we're having to mail you information, which take, takes much longer. And if you didn't get it back to us by Thursday at our close of business, which was 430, then you're not, you, you didn't get in this application process. And it's not for us lack of trying to call. We've got multiple notes in, in not employee files, but in provider files that we've started where we, we tried to call over and over again and it either went straight to voicemail, your mailbox was full, your mailbox hadn't been set, set up, up. Uh, we would get an email back because like Teresa said earlier, we can't read your writing, we can't tell if it's a one, if it's an L, if it's an I, if it's whatever, mm -hmm. um, be sure that you're writing neatly. Uh, Higher dates, I know that we were talking earlier about the um, our home providers. If you know your employees' higher dates, you can't just put 12, 2021. Mm -hmm. We can't accept that. We need to know because that's our look back period. They had to be hired by 12, 1 for this upcoming grant period. Um, and, and they need to be on payroll. So mm -hmm. if we're ever audited or if anyone ever comes out, was that employee on payroll? 12 1. Can you show that they were being paid on 12 1? Because if you can't, then don't include them. So I think, you know, we had a fairly successful, we did it in a really short time. It was very rushed for us and for the providers. Yes. <laughs> But we think that we had a successful turnout. Yeah, I think so. And I can't stress, please get your information in because we cannot process that application. So that means you won't get paid that, um, you know, subgrant to pay your staff unless we have everything we need. So please get all the information in. If you have questions, um, that whether we got it or not, email us, please. Um, because as Kay said, we've got a thousand providers. So if our phones, you know, you're probably not going to get us in time. That email, we've got multiple people checking that email. Um, so we can check that email and respond back to you. And if you're email us, please, again, just like if you send any paperwork in, give us your provider name and your address because we have multiple locations with the same name or similar names. So we don't want to say, yes, we got yours for ABC Daycare, and really it was ABC Learning Center. So uh, please include all that information. And another thing um, is that as we talk, we think of, I think about more things, and I'm going to have to hush because we want this to be short and sweet. But TCR, we, we're lucky that we have multiple locations. So for those of you that are not familiar with the TCR family of programs, um, let me introduce you really quickly is that Child Care South in the Mobile, the southernmost part of the state, that is a TCR affiliate. If you need to take your application, if you don't have access to a fax, or if you would like to scan that, you can take it directly to that office. Those ladies, um, Natalie Nettles and Miss Cheryl, will be happy to help you with anything. If you want to download and print, uh, we have a space available for you to do that. The same thing, Child Care Central in Birmingham, 
the subsidy office. Mm -hmm. Generica Johnson, and she's our um, she's our region director there. She'll be more than happy to help you out, print, copy, whatever you need to do to be successful in submitting. And in our northernmost counties, we have Child Care Central that is in Huntsville. That is a quality enhancement agency. Um, they can do the same things there that I've mentioned at our other two offices. And of course, if you live in central Alabama, you have our central office, TCR Child Care, is located right here in Talladega, Alabama, in Talladega County. Uh, we'll be happy to help you print, save documents, whatever. That was an ongoing, reoccurring theme is that we had, uh, I know I dealt with a lot of programs that called and did not save, or they sent us their um, original copy of the grant. You need to keep a grant copy. This is a legally, legally binding um, agreement that you're getting into, and you need to keep that. You need to keep moving forward. You need to keep, you need to know who whose name is on that, who, what on that employee roster so that you can make sure you're, you're doing that correctly moving forward. So please, um, you know, we, we have those resources available. Our website is um, www.tcrchildcarecorporation.org. Uh, stabilization grant is on the top of the page. Click on that. You'll find our email address, you'll find our fax number, you'll find our office locations, the addresses, everything you need to know right at your fingertips on our website. Yep. And we look forward to working with all the providers and uh, over the next um, several quarters, I guess 18 months. So if you have any questions, just email us and contact us that way. It's the quickest way, of course, the phone numbers are listed on this also. And I hope to get out and see some people and meet some people we've gotten. I feel like we've gotten to know people over the phone and um, it's just been fun. So thank you for participating and thank you. we look forward to it. Bye. I think that's it, that pause. Or will we? <laughs>